Hey, welcome to Beyond the Blackboard, the channel that helps you upgrade your mindset so you can achieve more inside and out of the classroom. If you're asking yourself questions like, how do I up my grades? What do I do after school? How do I become who I want to be? This is the place for you. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button to find out about future videos. New videos come out Monday mornings. Today, we're looking at the classic Pixar movie, Finding Nemo, and how you can use failure to your advantage. That's right, failure is a good thing. It's righteous! Righteous! Yeah! Oh, I'm not gonna do that again. But before we start, a quick recap. And warning, there are spoilers. Okay, deep breath. After tragically having his partner and most of his eggs eaten, Marlon is left with just one bit of family left, Nemo. He becomes an overly cautious dad, leading Nemo to rebel and get caught by human scuba divers. Marlin's then forced to go on the incredibly dangerous mission of crossing the ocean to rescue his son from a dentist fish tank in... Sydney. <gasps> P. Sherman 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. 42, Wallaby. where he meets Dory, escapes sharks, gets eaten by a whale, surfs with turtle dudes, and eventually gets his son Nemo back after a heroic and heartwarming rescue mission involving a fishing boat and a school of trapped fish. <clears throat> can I, can someone get me some water? So to best illustrate how Marlon's view on failure changes, we'll look at him at the beginning and after his journey. First, let's start at the beginning. Have a look for yourself. How do you think Marlin treats failure? Into the area now. Any rushing fluids? No. Are you woozy? No. How many stripes do I have? I'm fine. Answer the stripe question. Three. No. See, something's wrong with you. I have one, two, three. That's all I have. Oh, you're okay. How's the lucky fin? Lucky. Let's see. <laughs> you can clearly see that Marlin is in fact terrified of failure. Why? Because to him, failure could mean losing his only son. And because of this fear, he pretty much does the same thing every single day. He never challenges himself or Nemo in anything, so he never really learns or improves at anything. In fact, he sums up his mindset in one neatly packaged quote. You think you can do these things, but you just can't, Nemo! I hate you. Okay, think. How often do you say that to yourself when you have a challenge in front of you? Maybe it's in a different form like, I'm not good at English, or I'm terrible at public speaking, or even, I'm just not very popular. Everyone says things like this to themselves at times, but when we do, we're limiting ourselves. We begin to fear failure. Okay, cut to the end of the movie. Let's look at Marlin at the end. Time for school, time for school! Get up, let's go, let's go! He's confident. He's charismatic. So just then, the sea cucumber looks over the mollusk and says, with fronds like these, who needs anemones? <laughs> He's up for adventure. He's... Righteous! Why? Because he's been on a journey that's shown him that learning from failure is the key to success. If he'd given up and blamed himself when he nearly got eaten by sharks, went through the jellyfish forest, was chased by a terrifying piranha thing with a dangly light on his head, then he would never have achieved his goal of getting Nemo back. He needed to change his thinking from failure is something to fear and avoid, to failure is something that's going to happen, so I'm going to learn from it when it does. Oh my goodness! Whoa, kill the motor, dude. Let us see what Squirt does flying solo. Did you see that? Did you see me? Did you see what I see? Yeah. 
Okay, I can hear you saying. That's all very good for a CGI Disney fish and quite frankly, that's all pretty obvious. But how does this actually relate to me? Guess what? I'm about to tell you. Think about something you're trying to be successful at right now. I'm talking literally anything, from getting better grades, applying to uni courses, or just trying to be more socially confident even. Whatever it is, studies have shown time and time again that the biggest difference between those who are successful and those that aren't isn't intelligence, confidence, good looks, or even natural talent. The biggest difference is how they look at failure. In her incredibly influential book, Mindset, Carol Dweck called this fixed and growth mindset. People with growth mindset expect failure, and because of this, they don't fear it. Instead, they learn from it and keep pushing themselves again and again until eventually they master it. But someone with fixed mindset will fail once and stop trying. So how do you start treating failure differently? Well, it's not always easy and can be a long process. But the first step is figuring out what failures you avoid. If you've got some mass work you're really struggling with, do you keep pushing yourself to work it out? Or do you immediately bail and put your hand up to ask the teacher? Do you give up when you don't get selected for the sports team? Or do you keep trying until you get it? Do you apply for that course or job that's really hard to get? Or do you say, oh, I might do it later and end up spending 17 hours straight on Instagram or playing Red Dead Redemption? So remember, failure is your friend. In fact, success cannot happen without failing a lot first. So embrace it, accept it, expect it. And when it does happen, you gotta just keep swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dory, no singing. Ha, 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 Dory. I love to swim in. Dory. When you want.